all I can say after episode eight last week, where our boy casually got forcefully engaged to his teacher, she not once but twice wanted that student. And to just enter episode nine and go from an assassination plotline, an attempt on a princess's life, quickly that princess starts asserting her dominance. And I'm like, damn, if I mean, honestly, if Yuya wasn't around, it feels like almost this, this princess is building her own harem. By the end of that situation, we more or less end up in a situation where Yuya, a princess, the girl who tried to kill said princess, are in a really interestingly even if it's not fully confirmed i mean it's how do you not imply that that ain't a poly threesome right there because this, this man can't be stopped i'm i'm once i'm one or two episodes away from declaring yuya as the most powerful harem king in anime period the past two episodes of this show are peak looney tunes level bullshit but it is so damn fun. Like, like, what are we watching here? Now, a full live reaction episode 9 is available on my Patreon. If you do want to see my mind break in real time, as I'm like, there ain't no way we're going this direction. But this show is fantastic. It unironically is a fantastic show. It's as if the author of this show and the studio had the same vision. One crafted a story that uses every trope, cliche, trend... It almost takes the piss on it, and then the studio ran with that and just said, you know what? Bet. We're gonna make this extreme. How many times have we seen a character have everyone and their mother infatuated and wanting to suck the boy's D? It happens every anime season, and usually we don't like the main character in question. But the thing that I've constantly seen and what I've constantly said is that Yuya as a character is actually pretty fantastic. He's like in the top 1% of this genre, not because he's like written in a way that is a billion times like masterpiece level character writing, but it's you made him likable at the start and you keep him oblivious in a way that keeps him from becoming a scumbag and all these weird situations that he doesn't really understand lead to such comedy gold you just appreciate his obliviousness to what's going on. He gets a peck on the cheek by this assassin, Luna, and he's like, I don't really know what that was about, but okay. Just the, the innocence of this man, despite the so not innocence of this show. I mean, I'm, I wasn't really surprised by that one girl cop in a feel in the changing room, but when you do it in the middle of the soccer game and just the whole soccer field is just like, bro, what, what is, like, what even is this school? Like, it's ridiculous, but you have to admit, it is entertaining. The, I, the whole idea that you have a princess just casually running off after almost getting killed. Poor Owen. Owen doesn't get paid enough to deal with the king and this princess's BS because he is running for his life. The goblins are trying to kill him. He's going all night. And our boy Yuya casually comes back and says, yeah, I, I casually slept with these two. Owen just being like, bruh, I've been worried sick for a day because this princess is casually running off, I'm getting chewed out by her father because she wants to marry you, and you came back with another girl, and now you won't even come back to the capital. You know what, buddy? Do whatever the hell you want. It's just, he doesn't get paid enough for this nonsense, but that's what makes it comedy gold. But you do have to admit, it is a lot more fun than rather than dragging out a plot line of, hey, we're gonna turn, because a blind man could see that eventually Luna would end up joining on the princess's side. Usually these shows would take an arc to get there. The show says, screw that. You want fun? You want rocket speed level antics? She's just gonna say, hey, I'm a princess. You're my future husband, whether you like it or not. He's had more than one woman basically say we're getting married. And honestly, out of everyone, the princess has probably the best shot because she has an army to force you to do it. She's like, hey, you're going to be a guard for me. You know what? It's fine. And listen, I'm in control. Hey, have you ever had his bath? Oh, what? what? What's going on? And then they end up having a bath together. Does it logically make as much sense as it may, like maybe some people would? No. But if you're going to hit every trope cliche for a harem anime, and the show, I think the full English name is something like, I got a cheat skill in another world and became unrivaled in the other world or something like that. I'm pretty sure I'm pretty close. That name is actually probably the most spot on isekai light novel title you could give. You gain cheat skills in a fantasy world and you actually do become a god of the other world. 
the soccer game, the buddy, t after getting told by the princess, teleportation magic is pretty damn crazy, right? Because it stars wars, it's stuff of fairy tales. She's like, hey, don't be stupid and use it in different places, which honestly, he needs some people to kind of reel him in so he doesn't become an OP king. And then whether he teleported or it was just fast as hell, the fact that he catches the soccer ball like an inch away from scoring, whips the bad boy, and then he's like, does that count as a goal? I have no idea because no one's ever done it before. <laughs> like, what are we watching with this show? It is so stupid that I love it. It has moments that are actually really well written in terms of how they break away from the trends, but the past couple of episodes are so unapologetically wild that it said, hey, we're going to have fun. We're going to make you laugh. Whether you're the type of anime fan who likes the most basic of isekai where every girl fawns over the most boring character, or you're the type of person who hates those shows, you can't watch last week where a boy fights a bear and suplexes him as his teacher casually gets engaged with him. It doesn't matter that she was initially drunk, even sober teacher wanted him literally the next day. To then having a situation where you end with an assassin trying to kill a princess, and we end with said princess bathing with said assassin and then sleeping together in the same bed and by the end of it it just feels like the most it's it's three's three's not a crowd three's company for these guys by the end of this show like if like the end of the white novel i should say because it's not like we're gonna get 10 seasons of this but imagine this is how i'm gonna imagine the show ends every single character that you think is joining the harem at some point He's just gonna, he's gonna be in a relationship officially. He's gonna be married to like six different people. He'll be boyfriend and girlfriend with so many characters. And he'll just be, and he'll get like kisses and you'll be like, hmm, I wonder why that happened. He still will understand it, but that will be the brilliant comedy ending that this show deserves. Like, I seriously love the show. I would go as far to say this is actually becoming, between last episode and this episode, my favorite thing to talk about on the channel. Just when I think it's not going to get crazier than a man suplexing a bear, we just casually turn what is normally a 6 to 12 episode plotline of character going from joining a horrible dark guild to then getting a noble story to just casually saying, nah, we're just going to kind of unofficially officially announce that there's some really interesting chemistry with the three of them, and while they may be a little jealous, I mean, at the same time, it seems like they're way more okay with sharing than maybe they let on, and honestly, man, this show, this show's brilliant. I said last week, it was the greatest anime ever, man. I just have a blast watching it. Thoughts and feelings yourself down below. Drop a like if you enjoyed. Subscribe if you're new around here. Ring my bell so you can get notified when I upload more easily to leave on the channel, and as I mentioned, full live reaction is available on my Patreon if you're interested, and while you're there, you'll also get a video shoutout. So today, we have The Gentleman, Zuda, Tom Smith, and Zia. So I appreciate the support, everyone. Please take care and have a good one.